Well, Elizabeth O'Farrell and Julia Grinnan are two uh, women who were out uh, in, during the 1916 Rising. Both of them are from Dublin, uh, both of them working class. They knew each other from their school days and joined various organisations together, Indian, the Heron, uh, the Irish Women's Franchise League, Cumann and Mon. So obviously they were very interested in women's rights, workers' rights. They were in the Irish Women's Workers' Union and the cause of Ireland, the three great causes that Countess Markovic uh, mentioned. They also lived together all of their lives and were activists together, so they had a lifelong relationship. Uh, and interest in Julia and Elizabeth has grown over the years. Elizabeth was always in the history books. Just a footnote mainly, known Nurse O'Farrell, who brought out the um, surrender flag in 1916, and there's a famous photograph where Pierce is handing uh, the official surrender to the British uh, general and Elizabeth is beside him but you can only see her feet and her coat uh, and even that was taken out of the photograph to clean it up make it look a little bit better but it's become symbolic in many ways of how women particularly revolutionary women were written out of that uh, period of history and, in, and indeed broadly in Irish history but obviously herself and Julia have much uh, deeper histories more complicated histories longer histories as activists, as political women, uh, as, as women who developed political ideologies in their own right. And this is what's important about understanding women in Irish history. It's not just about adding them in, the add women and stir version of history, but about understanding what motivated women, uh, women like Julia and Elizabeth. And interestingly, they're buried here in Glasnevin Cemetery together in, in the same grave, which again indicates the depth of their relationship. Um, and, and we can say they were in a same-sex relationship. So they are together in life and together in death for eternity, you could say. And I think it's a wonderful story of women who committed their lives to causes they believed in, but also women who made choices about who they wanted to live their lives with. Sitting here um, in 2022, um, it's very much because the world has changed. Um, I remember a time when the history books didn't include women's stories. And what we're really looking for is, I suppose, a, a form of what we, you'd call gender justice, which is equality. It doesn't mean that every woman's role is important, no more than every man's role is important. But what you need to understand is that while you, you know, people would nowadays will, say, will know the term common amon. When I studied modern Irish history, I'd never heard of an organisation called common amon. In many ways, you, you, it is hard to say that women were written out of history because often they're not even in the history, or if they're in the history, it's in the footnotes. Marginalised, often overlooked, invisible, further contribution to the causes. So if we talk about the revolutionary period, including the rising, the War of Independence and the Civil War. Uh, more and more, the part that women played is being recognised. Women were ignored in large part, and then slowly, 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 as more and more scholarship and research and publication uh, happened, um, we began to know more about not just the Elizabeth O'Farrells and the Julia Grennans, but the Rosie Hackett's, a young uh, working class woman uh, who, who was out in 1916 and spent her life as a member of the um, Women's Workers Union and then the ITGWU, uh, running the sweet shop beside uh, Liberty Hall. Uh, and then the campaign in 2013 to name the bridge after Rosie Hackett was so successful because young feminist women led a grassroots campaign to support Rosie Hackett and it won because people connected with her and her story as an ordinary woman who did extraordinary things. And yes, I think we need more bridges, buildings, statues, plaques to women and their contribution to Irish history because it does. People do walking tours and if, if you do those tours, mostly you're getting male-centric history. But if we had more plaques and more buildings and more statues and more bridges and whatever named after women in all the cities and towns in the country, we would get more women's history as part of those walking tours, as part of you know what people are being told about the history of Ireland. Mano 100 is an online resource which uh, looks at women's involvement in the decade of centenaries between the 19. 
1921 and 1923. So what it is, is a, it's a sharp focus on the, on the last years of the decade. We're not trying to insert women into the narrative in a way that they, that they don't belong. It's just re-angling the lens to show the other stories. And it was a way to keep telling the women's story and to build on what had been done over the last 10 years. It's an opportunity to really, really drill into small stories and animate them and make people understand. And what you're always hoping is that they'll go back to understand something in their lives. So every generation has seen some massive change. And I think that's really, when you're a historian, it's like, where did it all begin? And that's why women's history is important.